did you know that PowerPoint has a remove background feature and that it's actually pretty decent? Well, that's what this video is all about. I'm going to show you how to find and use the remove background feature and share three tips for making the most out of this feature. I wanted to make this video because not a lot of people know about this feature, or if they do, they think it sucks and they avoid it. But I have some ideas on how to help make it a more useful feature for you to consider. Before we get started, hello, I'm Dr. Echo Rivera and welcome to my channel, More Than PowerPoint. I help academics and researchers and those who want the non-academic path, basically professionals, learn how to create visually engaging presentations. So let's talk about this remove background feature and use an easy example to get started. So I use emojis a lot in my work. They're a really easy and fun visual to use. And what I do is I go online, increase the browser size to make the images large. I take a screenshot, then I go back into PowerPoint and I paste that screenshot image into a slide. Super easy. And right now it looks great. There's nothing to do here, except there is actually a white background surrounding the emoji because again, it's a screenshot. If the slide is a white background, this might be totally fine. But if I have a color background, this is gonna look really bad. So the most common way I use PowerPoint's remove background feature is to get rid of this white background because yeah, if there's a color background, this really just doesn't look very good. But honestly, even if these were going on a white background, well, I still might need to remove it because maybe I want them to be close together and maybe have a little overlap, but that white background is going to get in the way. So let's get rid of that background. Here is where you can find the remove background feature in PowerPoint. You click on the image and that's gonna activate the picture format tab. Now, if it says graphics format, then this isn't going to work because that's the wrong file type. So this remove background feature works on images, works on files like a PNG or a JPEG. It's not really gonna work on a vector image like an SVG. And if you have no idea what I'm talking about, <laughs> that's totally okay. Basically, when you click on the picture, it needs to say picture tab, then you're good to go and you're going to see the remove background option, which is right there all the way on the left. So you pretty much just click that and the menu at the top is going to change and you're gonna see that part of the image is gonna have this like bright pink color. That's because PowerPoint will take its best guess at what you want to remove. So just looking at this example, PowerPoint almost got this perfectly. And that's because the background is white and the emoji has like a thick black outline. So we have really great contrast here. So PowerPoint pretty much got it, but there's often some adjustments that need to be made. And that's when you can use these two options up here on the top left. They're mark areas to keep and mark areas to remove. And I'm going to show you how to use those in this video. And I did actually have to use that for this emoji here because PowerPoint didn't get it 100% correct. But let's look at the finished version right now, just so you can see it. So basically you just click out when you're done and there you go. And I've put a blue square so you can see <laughs> the, um, how the white outline was removed because that's the after and here is the before. Now I mentioned I still had to make an adjustment. So here is the version without an adjustment and with my adjustment. Can you see where the difference is? It's really small, but PowerPoint's first guess basically chopped part of the top outline out. So I had to use those adjustments to try to get as much of that back in there as I could. So let me show you how to actually use those now. Again, the first thing to do is to click on the image so that picture format tab pops up. You click on remove background and yeah, I could see that a little bit too much was removed. So click mark areas to keep. And all I had to do was draw a tiny little line right there to tell PowerPoint, no, actually try to keep that. <laughs> and then once I drew, then this is the final result and you pretty much just click out when you're done. Like that's how easy it was. So you just draw one little line to tell PowerPoint, no, please keep that in. Let me show you an example that involves a few more adjustments so you get a feel for this. 
Another way I use the remove background feature is with my bitmojis. I don't have my camera on a lot of times, so I like to throw in bitmojis every now and then so people can kind of see what my reaction would be if I had my camera on. Plus again, they're just fun. So click on the picture and then click remove background and we can see that PowerPoint is removing too much. So I need to fix that and I click on mark areas to keep and I just draw lines over the things I want to keep in the picture. And then watch what happens. So I draw that line and then, uh-oh, now PowerPoint has removed the neck. So now I have to tell PowerPoint, no, you got it right the first time, keep the neck and that little part of the forehead. So I just wanted to make sure you saw that so you knew to watch out for that because every time you mark an area to keep or remove, it might actually change another part of the image. So you might have to draw a few extra lines, but still that was all it took to remove the background from this. It was super easy and quick to do. So there you go, a quick overview of how to remove backgrounds in PowerPoint. This is gonna help you clean up some of your images that have unnecessary backgrounds, especially screenshots. And I highly recommend you save time by doing this once and then just copying and pasting across presentations. Like don't remove the background on the same image every time you use it. Now, if you're like, well, I don't use emojis or bitmojis, then that's totally okay. Don't get hung up on the fact that I used those as my examples. I like to use easy things so you can focus on learning about the feature itself. This can be used for all kinds of things. So here's an example from my training course. I just finished working on some new training material for my upcoming masterclass course, Captivate Any Audience, which is all about storyboarding, storytelling, and how to make even the most dry information fun and engaging. I'm super excited about this course. And if you think you're interested, all the links you need to learn more are below. So anyway, I use cupcakes as a metaphor for a lesson. So clearly I was like, I need a visual of a cupcake because, right, we don't want to just tell people, imagine we have a cupcake. No, don't do that. Show them the cupcake. So I went looking and I fell in love with this photo. It was perfect for what I was looking for. But... I didn't want that yellow background all the time. It was getting in the way of my slide design in, in, in ways that I wanted to use it in my lesson. But no problem because PowerPoint has removed background. So I use that feature to get rid of all that yellow. And here is the result. I mean, <laughs> look at that. Now I can really make that cupcake pop on the slide and really stand out and I don't have that almost overwhelming amount of yellow every single time I want to use this. And the best part is, I don't think I had to make any adjustments to this. PowerPoint actually got this one right on the first try. So I was able to use it in this way and do things like add the labels for, you know, so I can explain the metaphor. <laughs> and then I was able to use it in fun ways throughout the course as that metaphor, as that theme for my new course. So you can totally use this feature for your class lectures and things like that. It can really help you get creative and use visuals in a more fun and engaging way. And just FYI, every single audience appreciates when you do this type of thing, when you create engaging and visual slides. Even professionals want this. If you are somehow thinking that this doesn't sound professional enough, then immediately watch my video about how visuals are more professional than text heavy slides. I'll put the link to that below. Anyway, moving on, <laughs> that is in the fourth masterclass, Captivate Any Audience, but I have a whole masterclass training series that helps you use less text, more visuals, and just in general, be a more visual and creative presenter in this professional academic research context. You can get started for free. Again, all the links you need are below. So yeah, this is a super handy feature to have in your back pocket. Now, before we move on to the three tips I have to share with you, let's just take a moment and acknowledge something together. Yes, obviously, 
professional apps like Photoshop or Affinity Photo are going to do a significantly better job at removing backgrounds than PowerPoint. No one is going to get a gold star for leaving a comment stating the obvious. Just a heads up. But look, I work with academics, educators, researchers, federal and state staff, TTA providers. So extremely busy people who don't have the time it takes to get that professional level of background removal. And, you know, the type of presentations we're doing, we tend to not even need that Photoshop level background removal. Honestly, in some cases, the less perfect it is, the more charming it can be, which can actually help you connect with your students or your audience more effectively than if it was like perfectly polished. So that's why even though I have and I know how to use Af Affinity Photo to remove backgrounds, I use PowerPoint's background removal feature for most of my training material or pretty much all of it. <laughs> so it's still a great tool to use. Okay. With that said, I have three tips to share with you as you start to use this feature. So tip number one, the best thing you can do is to find and use images that have a super high contrast between the foreground and the background. So for example, um, these emojis have a thick black line against a white background. So it's just, it's very clear. It's going to be very obvious to PowerPoint, the difference between the background and the foreground. And if you have that, this feature is going to work really well. If there isn't a super clear line, then it's probably not going to work. Tip number two is similar in that this feature works really well if the background itself is a solid color. So in the emoji example, the background is just white. In the cupcake example, we don't have a nice line or anything like we see with the emoji, but that background is pretty much a solid yellow color. I mean, look, the wrapper is a lighter shade of yellow than the background. So we don't actually have that great of contrast between the two. But somehow PowerPoint was able to distinguish between the wrapper and the background. And I think part of that is because the background was just this one solid color. So try to go for something like that. If you have backgrounds that just have a lot of detail and a lot of things going on, yeah, I don't think this feature will work very well. And finally, tip number three is about what to do when you can't actually <laughs> do tips one and two. This isn't to say it's impossible to use this feature with stock photos or with backgrounds that aren't some solid color. What you can do in that case is look for backgrounds that at least don't have a lot going on. So it's very minimal details and look for a background that's maybe been blurred a little bit. So again, let's compare these three images with the one I just showed, right? Like there's a lot more color and variety in the one at the bottom. It's just not going to work in PowerPoint. Whereas the three images at the top, we can see it's almost like there's really only two main colors in the background or maybe up to three main colors in the background and the background is maybe a little bit blurry. That's really gonna help PowerPoint be able to distinguish between the foreground and the background and will increase your chance of success when using this feature. So do you see what all tips have in common? The key to understanding this feature is understanding what picture to use in the first place. Maybe you were expecting me to share some magical tips on how to use the adjustments, like where exactly to draw the line or how long to draw the line and things like that, because maybe that's what you've struggled with before and you were hoping <laughs> there was a solution for that. But honestly, I've found that pretty much if PowerPoint doesn't get it right within a few adjustments, it's probably never going to work. So what I do is I will make up to five marks. So that's up to five mark areas to keep or mark areas to remove. And if it's just not working by then, then I completely abandon that picture and I look for a different picture. So it's often all about what picture you use in the first place. By following these tips with just a few adjustments, I was able to get these looking pretty good. 
I didn't record myself adjusting all of them because it's kind of the same as what you've already seen, but here is one last example of me using this feature that did do something a little funny that I had to adjust. So again, click on the picture and then click remove background and see how PowerPoint did not even come close. So I just used mark area to keep and I sort of tried to draw like a diamond shape, like the shape of the person and that basically worked. And now I just had to mark an area to remove because it kind of kept in a piece of the sky, which was kind of funny. But so I just had to make a couple extra marks and it ended up looking pretty okay. Now you might be noticing that it's a little weird because this person doesn't have any feet, but we could fix that by basically placing the image somewhere like at the bottom of the slide. So you don't really like notice that they're missing any feet. So there's ways to still get around it, but I mostly just wanted you to see how the background removal feature worked because we were following that last tip. There wasn't a lot going on in the background, so we were still able to make it work. And finally, just remember that nothing is permanent. So if it's starting to look like a total disaster while you're in there and trying to adjust and it's just it's just not going well, you can just click discard all changes and the picture will go back to how it was and you'll be clicked out of this background removal feature. Now, <laughs> if you click out or accept the changes on accident and you've ruined the picture, <laughs> which I've definitely done, that's totally fine. Um, just look for the option that says reset picture. So you basically click on that and then you click on reset picture. You don't have to click on reset picture and size, just reset picture and it will go back to how it was. So don't panic if it doesn't go right. <laughs> All right, so hopefully you enjoyed this video and found the tips helpful. Just a few things before we wrap up. What you just watched was a PowerPoint presentation. So many people are convinced that they have to use fancy software to make engaging presentations, and it's simply not true. I only have the home and personal Office 365 subscription. I do use a Windows. And no, I'm not an affiliate. <laughs> the only reason I say this and the only reason I like PowerPoint is because as of today, it really is the best tool that we have in this academic and research context for making accessible, engaging presentations quickly and easily. And my channel here is just the tip of the iceberg. I share all of my best strategies in my Presentation Skills Masterclass program. So if you'd like to learn more from me, check out the links below and learn more about the free training that will help you get started and help you learn more about my program. You know where the links are, they're in the description. <laughs> All right, thank you so much for watching this video to the end, you are awesome. Again, I'm Dr. Eka Rivera and this is my channel More Than PowerPoint. Again, make sure you check out that free training we have available, the link is below. And if you enjoyed this video, please click all the things they do actually matter and help this channel a lot. It's a great way to support the work that we do here and helps keep us going. All right, well, until next time, have a great day.